Hello and welcome to Sean White's Solar and Energy Storage Podcast. This podcast is Electricity Basics Part 1. Many people in the solar and storage industry do not know much about electricity, and now is the time to have fun and learn. In this episode, we will introduce you to people with names like Volta, Ampere, and Ohm. Get ready to power your brain cells with all that stored energy from last night's tacos. This podcast, in general, includes both basic and advanced material, and this particular episode, along with a few following episodes, are on the basic side. If you are advanced, you still can learn something, such as how to explain things to normal, basic people. To have fun and to learn more about solar and storage, go to solarsean.com. What we're going to do now is learn about the basics of electricity, and we are going to start by introducing you to the one and only Mr. Volt. Mr. Volt, Alessandro Volta invented volts. Mr. Volt was around from 1745 to 1827. Who was around at the same time as Mr. Volt inventing these things? Mr. Amp. And Mr. Amp looks a little bit more fun than Mr. Volt. He likes to keep things flowing. He was around in 1775 to 1836. And what happens when these two guys get together? They make Mr. Watt. And so Mr. Watt is 1736 to 1819. I think it's kind of interesting that all of these guys were together at the same time, you know, on this planet. I always get kind of mixed up because I'm like Mr. James Watt and all that. And I'm like, didn't I hear about that guy? And like, politics. And he was Reagan's Secretary of Interior. He wasn't too fond of solar. I don't know. We should ask him. Maybe he changed his mind. I think he still might be around. What you need to remember, if you don't know this, you definitely need to know this. If you want to get anywhere in the solar industry to understand how all these things are related to each other. A volt times an amp is a watt. A volt times an amp equals a watt. Do you have that memorized? Also, we could say, what's a volt a measurement of? A volt is measurement of voltage. Then also an amp, that is a measurement of, that's right, current. And then a watt is a measurement of what? Power. Some of the ways that we can think of some of these things, well, volt is easy voltage. Current, the way that I sometimes remember that is they use the symbol I for current. And that is a vowel like the letter A. Another way to remember that for current is irradiance. And so the symbol I is used for measuring current. And also I stands for irradiance. That's the brightness of the sunlight. And that increases your current. Either the size of the solar cell, a bigger solar cell, catches more sunlight. And that makes more current. And then also irradiance is sunlight. And that makes current. And it starts with an I. How convenient. And then watt. How are we going to remember that? Okay, watt is a measurement of power. As far as power goes, the middle letter for power, W for Watt, for James Watt, the one that wasn't the Secretary of Interior. Now, that's what I said, Mr. Watt's on top. And he is over Mr. Volt in order to make Mr. Amp. These guys had a lot of fun back in that day, didn't they? Watt is all by himself, and Volt and Amp are next to each other. So whoever is alone becomes on top when you want to solve for algebra. And so that's just basic algebra. And these three guys, they were all around at the same time, you know, maybe they were hanging out. That's my conspiracy theory. And a kilowatt is a common use of power. So a watt is 1000 watts too. That's the metric system, 1000 watts. So 10 times 100, that's one with three zeros. Nowadays, compact fluorescents are out of style. You want to get LEDs with single-digit wattage, unless you're trying to heat your home. Ten years ago, the average 60-cell solar module, like the one that you would put on your roof, was about 250 watts, and that was the cost-effective way to make solar electricity. You could always get things that were more efficient, but that was what people were putting on their roofs. Nowadays, we are up there somewhere around three modules per kilowatt. But not exactly. So we have different modules of different sizes. Your typical 72 cell module and your typical 60 cell module. So when we're talking about something that you're going to put on your house, we often talk about a 60 cell module. When we talk about something that's going to go in a solar farm, it's oftentimes going to be a 72 cell module. They're the same width, that's six cells across, and the dimensions of the cells are 
about six inches, which is 156 millimeters. Therefore, you get a 72 cell module, that's the bigger one, which is gonna be about one meter by two meters, which is about 40 inches by six and a half feet. The 60 cell module is gonna be the same width, one meter, but about one and two thirds meters long, which means it's about 40 inches by five and a half feet. The 72 cell modules are a little bit harder to haul around, especially if you're up on a residential roof. And the main reason that people use 60 cell modules instead of 72 cell modules is because a lot of times with the smaller roofs, you can fit more. A 72 cell module might still have two rails, so it would end up taking less rail for the same amount of power. There are some modules that if you buy by the container that are perhaps 20 cents per watt if you didn't have to worry about tariffs. And that's extreme on the low side. Anytime you have an increase in efficiency, it will add cost. Let's start talking about some of the units. V is for volt and it is sometimes called EMF. And we can see writings, we'll see somebody write the letter E for voltage. Let's review a little bit about current. Current is symbolized by the letter I and that comes from intensity. That's the intensity of all those electrons flowing. And the measurement for current is an amp. So an amp, that's the measurement. And that's the rate of flow of electrons coming at you, electrons per second, that's a whole lot of them. And then watts is the measurement of power. And there's the middle letter of power is a W for watts. And then for resistance, we can measure resistance in ohms. And sometimes you see the omega symbol, especially you'll know that if you're in a fraternity. And that omega symbol is the measurement that we use for ohms, and those are the units for resistance. That's the resistance to current. So if you have a load or something, something that uses energy, it has resistance also. The copper in the wire is a conductor, and that conductor has low resistance because it wants to let the electrons go through. And the insulation around the wire that protects us, that insulation has very high resistance because it doesn't want those electrons to go through. Okay, let's do it again. Watts equals volts times amps. You got that? Watts equals volts times amps. And another way, if you couldn't remember that, because we're always just looking at different ways of remembering things, is there's poor people in West Virginia that can't have solar because their politicians are bought out by the industry that pulls that black stuff out of the ground. We like other types of black stuff. It's called silicon crystals instead of coal. Volts are the electrical potential difference. And so voltage is a potential difference. It's sort of like, well, I have all these electrons over here and I don't have any electrons over there. And all those electrons are pushing against each other, wanting to get out, wanting to equalize. It's like a crowded room. And then there's an empty room and you open the doors and boom, it all equalizes. Everybody takes up their space. Batteries have voltage when not in use. So when something's turned off, there's voltage there, just like a plug socket in the wall, just like a PV module in the sun that's not connected to anything. There's still voltage there. And a lot of times in the electric industry, we try to compare things to things such as hydraulics or water flow. So if you're taking an exam, they might ask you, what is the hydraulic analogy for voltage? And you might think, oh, I don't know what it is. What's that guy look like? He looks like he's under lots of pressure. That's right, Mr. Volt is under lots of pressure, especially because when an amp wants to be alone, he's underneath Mr. Watt. So there is lots of pressure in a volt. And voltage, the hydraulic analogy for voltage is pressure because all those electrons are all pushed together and they wanna go somewhere else. And so we already talked about EMFs, electromotive force type of volt, a different way that scientists talk about voltage. If we have a short circuited module, and so what is a short circuit? It's like you cross positive and negative. If you short circuited some things, they would blow up like a battery. So don't ever short circuit your battery and you're anywhere, but a short circuited PV module has no voltage because things are touching each other. There's no potential difference. And then with PV too, we're gonna to talk a bit about heat decreasing the PV voltage. Some people think like, oh, the sun's out. That's really good for PV and it is. That's the best thing for PV. It's great to have sun. As the PV heats up, its voltage goes down a little bit. It's not like gonna cut down in half or anything crazy like that, 
but when it gets hotter, there's a little bit less voltage. On the NAPSET PV associate exam, it used to be that we had to do string sizing calculations, and it was the hardest part on the test. However, beginning in the year 2019, NABSEP stopped doing string sizing calculations on the PV associate exam. However, still expect there to be questions about low temperatures, increasing voltage, that means airflow on a PV array is better for performance. A few things that you should take notice of if you're gonna take the NABSEP PVA exam. That means that you should know that the hydraulic or water analogy for voltage is pressure and that heat decreases PV voltage, which also means that cold temperatures increase voltage. Cool, eh? So when it gets hot, it's not good for silicon or semiconductors or your computer. That's why supercomputers have dry ice on the chip to keep it cool to make those electrons move fast. And also our PV modules that are made out of the same type of silicon as a computer, they like to be cool. Cool, man. Okay, amps. That is current amperage or an ampere. Sometimes we call it an ampere or amperage. Ampere after Mr. Amp. That's what a current is. The symbol is I for intensity. And the hydraulic water analogy for an amp is flow. So go with the amp, go with the flow. Amps are electrons per second. A circuit that's open, that means say you had a PV module and positive and negative aren't touching each other or anything else, like an inverter or a charge controller or battery, it's open circuited. And so if it's open circuited, it has no current. And so there's no current. An amp is what kills you. And so like an amp going through your heart, it could stop your heart. But sometimes they'll do little things where they can start your heart up, you know, when they put those things on your chest and go boom. Also, another thing is like volts are still dangerous because a volt can make you fall down. And that's not a good thing either, especially if you are on a roof. Falling down can kill people that work in high places. So volt can kill you too. Think of a stun gun. Stun guns are high voltage and low current, and so they're not supposed to kill you. However, they do once in a while. And then high current is what kills you. So don't have high current. Also, amperage increases with light. And so remember we called that irradiance, which starts with an I is light and that will increase your current. And also having a bigger net, so a larger solar cell, will also cause more current. Electrons are small and they move very fast. And so what an amp is, is 6.2 times 10 to the 18 electrons per second. Also pointing out just some things that could be on the PVA exam that you should know is the water or hydraulic analogy for current is flow and PV amperage increases with increased light proportionally. Another thing about that is the size of the solar cell. As that increases, it also increases the current. Look for that on PVA exams. Everybody likes to do water analogies and the waterfall analogies. And so Angel Falls, that's in Venezuela, and it's super high waterfall. But the flow is very low. So that symbolizes lots of pressure falling down. If you were down there, those water drops could hit you pretty hard. Also, there's not very much flow. So that would be a symbolic of high voltage and low current for that waterfall. And then another waterfall analogy, we have lots and lots of current and it's not falling near as far as those Angel Falls in Venezuela, Niagara Falls. Let's talk a little bit about time. What is time? How does that fit into the equation? Does it matter if you have your light bulb on for a minute, an hour, a year, a century? It adds up. And the same goes with the PV system. If you leave it on for a short amount of time, it's not near as important as if you leave it on for a long period of time. And then we're also going to talk about energy, the founder of energy, Mr. Energy himself, James Jewell. And he was around from 1818 to 1889. Mr. Time just said, hey, Mr. Watt, you're going to hand off the torch to Mr. Jewell. Power times time equals energy. Power times time is energy. So if I have a kilowatt and I leave it on for an hour, I get a kilowatt hour. If I have two kilowatts and I leave it on for an hour, I have two kilowatt hours. If I have a kilowatt and I leave it on for two hours, I have two kilowatt hours. If I have 10 kilowatts and I leave it on for 10 hours, that's gonna give me 100 kilowatt hours of energy. 
I'm using the units energy as kilowatt hours. So if we wanted to turn these things over, okay? So I want to solve for what is a watt or what is power? Power equals energy divided by time. Whoa, power is energy divided by time. Power times time is energy. So in other words, just what we do with this math is energy is by himself. We want to solve for power. We throw time under energy. Time goes under energy if we want to get power. We have all these different units there. Let's go over what is time. That is the question of the universe, the ultimate question. What is time? And now you're going to find the answer to what is time. Time is energy divided by power. So time is energy divided by power. All we did here is what we did is energy but was by himself and we had power times time is energy. So we just took power. We time wanted some alone time. And so instead of power times time being energy, we took power, we went underneath energy and we have time. So that's the answer that you've been waiting for. What is time? Time is energy divided by power. Remember that. And so when anybody ever asks you about time, you just go, that's energy divided by power, man. To be interesting, the age of the universe, according to scientists, is 13.82 billion years old. Energy and power. This just kind of like go over this over and inside out over again so you can remember it. Remember, energy equals power times time. Energy is power times time. Power measured in watts. Energy, typically in the solar industry, we're talking about electricity and your electric bill in kilowatt hours. A thousand kilowatt hours is a megawatt hour, by the way, or there's a thousand watt hours is a kilowatt hour. Right now, we're just talking about kilowatt hours. That's mostly what we're going to be talking about in the industry. And don't get confused. So many times when I see people talking about their bill, they're like, oh, I got my energy bill. And you go, how much do you use? And they go, I used 10,000 kilowatts this year. And you're like, no, you didn't. If you use 10,000 kilowatts, that's just way more than your bus bar could ever handle. You don't turn on 10,000 kilowatts all at once. That's what that would mean if you did 10,000 kilowatts this year. You turned it on all at once. You do it over time. That would be like turning on everything in your house or like that you use for the whole year all at once. And so energy we're going to talk about in kilowatt hours. And then another thing that people commonly get mixed up about is they think that it is kilowatts per hour because they're driving around and they're like, hey, how many kilowatts per hour do you drive and all that kind of stuff? And it's not kilowatts per hour. It's kilowatts times hours. It's power times time. People often get confused because we are measuring the speed that we drive in miles per hour. And they're like miles per hour, kilowatt hour, right? Okay, but that's wrong. That's different. And that's actually something that you could be tested on. There could be something that says something like this. Power is to energy as speed is to blank. Want to think about that for a second? Power is to energy as speed is to blank. Okay, so let's think that out a little bit. Power times time is energy. Power is like a rate. Power is like speed. And then we can think of energy as power times time. So speed times time, say you're driving 60 miles an hour for an hour, what happens after an hour? You went 60 miles. 60 miles is a measurement of distance. So that's the correct answer, distance. Power is to energy as speed is to distance. So that's a good thing to know and that helps you straighten out, think about that for a while, the kilowatt hours and make sure that you know that they're not kilowatts per hour. And I used to say to students saying there's no such thing as kilowatts per hour. That's just doesn't exist. But actually you could say that it does exist. They talk about in megawatts per hour. When they're talking about a ramp rate, when a utility is turning up a power plant, let's say that you have a big coal plant and you need to make steam, and so you have to heat things up with coal, you're gonna have to shovel in coal and wait for a while while that thing ramps up. And so that's how you could have power per time. It would be a ramp rate. That's definitely not something that's entry-level PV, and that's not something that you're gonna have to deal with with a PV system because when the sun hits the PV, it just goes right up to what it's going to go to automatically. There's no ramp rate with what we're dealing with. Power is a rate. 
energy is a quantity. Energy is what we want. That's what we're trying to make. When we do all of this solar stuff and we're trying to make money and everything, it's pretty much for the energy. If you do energy storage with batteries and things, sometimes there is a value to the power. So if the utility sags on their voltage, they might need a whole bunch of power all at once to help clean up the grid. And so the utility could buy power from a battery. That's some of the future stuff that we'll be seeing as energy storage becomes big, which is expected. When we buy PV or say how big our system is, we talk about kilowatts. So that's how big our PV system is. And kilowatts, when we're talking about houses and residential and stuff, and then when you talk about the big stuff, you're talking about megawatts. And if you see somebody talking about how they're gonna do a gigawatt, I would think that they're just doing a bragawatt. And a bragawatt is something that happens in the industry. It's very common where people say, I'm going to do a megawatt and this and that, and then they just are all talk. And so everybody in the industry knows what I'm talking about that's been in the industry for a while. So be careful of those people that are trying to sell you a bragawatt. So the beautiful Mr. James Jewell. Remember that a joule is a small amount of energy. Back in the early days when they were just inventing energy, they said, hey, how about a watt second? What you end up with is you would multiply 1000 watts per kilowatt, 3600 seconds per hour, and you would get a kilowatt hour, which would be 3.6 megajoules. Don't get too worried about memorizing that part though. I think it's just interesting to know where energy came from, the sun and Mr. James Jewell. So I hope you get your power and energy straight and may you never mix up kilowatts and kilowatt hours again. Hey, we all do it once in a while. Thanks for listening to Sean White's Solar and Energy Storage Podcast. To learn so much more, go to solarsean.com. That's solarsean.com. That's me.